bum, 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 bum. All right, everybody. Last Outrider here. And in this video, we are going to talk about physics and 40K. Specifically, relativity. This has been, I don't know, more of a nerd rage topic than anything else. But it's an important point because it's brought up sometimes in the novels. Some of the authors who write 40K stories are more scientifically inclined than others. But it is a running thread through all the 40K novels that science is not an important part of 40K. Even the most elementary of physics is thrown out the window when it comes to writing 40K stories. And since their editors uh, have no problem with this, I'm going to say that it is a publishing decision that the authors simply do not need to understand the basics of physics for them to write science fiction stories, making the science fiction stories more akin to fantasy stories. Really, for me, when I read them, and this is okay with me, I kind of just suspend my disbelief when reading them. But every once in a while, uh, 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 one of the authors in some of the stories comes in and tries to throw in some scientific jargon and actually try to explain how things work in 40K. Um, which is then the problem, because either either you do it or you don't do it. But why... Why just do it with one out of every ten novels? In this case, I'm going to talk about relativity and time. Um, <coughs> when it comes to space travel. I say this because I had a Dark Heresy campaign. And it was actually kind of fun because I had it span the entire length of the 40K... All the way from the Horus Heresy to uh, present day, relatively speaking, in 40K. And it is absolutely possible to do this. Because it's pretty difficult when you're going to do a campaign to just sit there and say, we're going to focus on this little, tiny, narrow, 100, 200 year strip of Imperium history. And everything else is either past or future. So the first question you're going to have to ask is, where are you going to set your story? And I decided you don't need to do that because, thank you, Einstein, uh, time is relative. Now, there was one story where a black Templar was talking to, I don't know, another space marine. And they were talking about who was older. And, and they had a brief conversation about relativity, about how he spent most of his time in void travel. So... Uh, he's like uh, 680 something years old and uh, how somebody on a planet might only have been like 100 years old and things like that. So that, so this shows that relatively relativity is known in 40K. I always explain this away as saying that the physics in 40K, it's just not our universe. It's a universe where chaos and psychers and craziness happens. So we can just say physics as we understand it simply doesn't exist in a 40k universe. So they can do whatever they want. And then you have a dialogue like that saying, oh no, it is standard physics. That means you're just crazy. Now, <coughs> let's look at Battlefield Gothic. <clears throat> Anybody who's read any of the stories is going to learn that ships when they make warp travel, do not appear around the planet. They appear at some type of nadir or zenith jump point outside of the solar system and then do an inbound travel to the planetary systems, which are usually at Earth distance from the sun 
if it's a normal uh, habitable planet, uh, that's quite a distance to go. Relatively speaking, that's pretty close to the sun, if it's an Earth-type star. If it's a bigger star, then it's even closer. Now, many of the books have the standard uh, description saying that it takes several weeks for these ships to translate into system. Let me give you an idea about how fast that's going. You may think, wow, that takes a long time. 40K is slow. They're trying to show that 40K is traveling slower than many of these other sci-fi universes where ships can just appear around planets and everything like that, and they're just there instantaneously. No, actually, this makes 40K one of the fastest sci-fi universes. Voyager. You know the Voyager probe launched back in the 70s? Okay, it just left our solar system this year. This year. It took 30 years to leave the solar system. So, from the standpoint of a fleet coming from outside the solar system and making it in to the inner system in weeks is fast really really fast and they're not using warp drive which means they're traveling close to the speed of light okay um wow i mean really close to the close enough to the speed of light that time dilation becomes a factor and time dilation becomes a factor very quickly in relativity uh, in physics. Let me give you an idea about how quickly it becomes a factor. GPS, you know, those little satellites traveling around the Earth that allows the GPS on your phone and whatnots to work, they have to be adjusted every few years because time travels slower in orbit around the Earth than it does on the planet. So that these satellites lose like half a second every couple years and have to be adjusted. That's just the distance between Earth and orbit. So, to travel in system, to give you an idea about the speed of light, it takes about eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to Earth. Okay? It takes a good 15 minutes to 40 minutes to travel out to the outer solar system. So for it to take weeks to travel into the solar system, we're going at a substantial fraction of the speed of light. <coughs> so much so that time on the planets will be substantially different than time on a ship. In other words, if my calculations are correct, it should be the difference of months. Meaning, when it takes several weeks to travel in system, is it take, most of the time when they say it takes several weeks, they're talking about from the perspective of the people on the ship. Which means, from the perspective of the people on the planet, it should be taking months to approach in system with the time difference. This also would be apparent in the actual space combat. Many times when you hear about uh, uh, these inter intrastellar battles, uh, they accelerate to combat speed. It took three days for Apollo 13 to travel from Earth to the moon. Three days. And it was traveling upwards of 50, I think 50 to 80,000 kilometers an hour. So, many of these uh, ships translate from 
the moon to earth style distances in hours hours so you can see the comparison here that means on average these ships are traveling hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour easily at a good 10 to 15 percent c 10 to 15 percent the speed of light and at that point in time uh, at that point in time time is noticeably different on the ship there is no way you can have a simultaneous universe on a ship as you can on a planet a fleet having a combat in it wouldn't even be orbit it would be around the solar system that took hours or even days would take months from the perspective of people on the planet so you can't have these oh we're gonna call down an orbital strike really because you know uh, five minutes on that ship will probably be like a day for you on the planet so and yet the books portray it as it's happening in real time simultaneous time for both of them this is not possible this spits in the face of physics simply not possible so I came up with some editorial guidelines for Games Workshop if they happen to be watching these videos four space battles to happen the way they describe them in the books your battles cannot be happening spanning across the solar system they must be happening at least half the distance between earth and the moon and they should not be the ships should not be traveling any faster than 50 to 80 uh, thousand kilometers per hour if you want to have any type of real-time relationship with people on the planet that they could actually tactically uh, work together and coordinate with each other so this concept that you're going to have uh, combat out in the outer solar system going on and they're moving at you know 10 percent C 10% of the speed of light going hundreds of thousands of kilometers an hour um, with thousands of ships is not possible it's not it's just simply not possible now let's go on, on a completely different tangent with a few more minutes that I'm gonna have in this video and that is acceleration in space is a compounded practice it means that you with a constant thrust you will keep accelerating and accelerating and accelerating so what I did in my campaign is you is take a battleship and I looked at, I calculated it out that with the with the with the velocities of acceleration that you're dealing with on standard in these books um, if you just continued that rate of acceleration for say a week you could easily start reaching 50% C 50% the speed of light plus if you kept this on for like a month uh, more than that now at that level of speed the time dilation effect is extreme we're talking about the point where one hour on a ship would start equaling years on a planet and this can keep going and I found this funny because they went through these extraordinary narrative gymnastics to create this new breed of space marines right putting them growing them in the warp where time is different it's like you didn't need to do that all you needed to do was take a couple battleship each one of them is supposed to hold like 25,000 each easily 
I'll j and have them just circle around the soul system at near the speed of light. You're only talking about 10,000 years. When you start, go you can just start getting up to 75C and boom, uh, you can grow all these space marines on a ship in the soul system. You don't even need to translate into the warp. It can just happen there. 10,000 years on the ship was uh, one uh, on Earth was just one year, a couple years on the ship. You could say it's five years on the ship and uh, 10,000 years on Terra. No problem. No warp travel necessary. In fact, this should be so easy. There are so many astral phenomena going on in 40K. You have neutron stars. You have black holes. You have all types of crazy things going on. Uh, super white, uh, yeah, white dwarves, but super blue giants, everything like that, where you could be traveling around it, where one hour around going around these uh, uh, objects is, is, is equal to one week on Earth. Time is so varied in this galaxy, there is simply no need to put something in the warp for 10,000 years and say, oh, time was different there. Uh, watch the movie Interstellar, if you watched that. They had one time where they went down to the planet and spent three days there, and the guy up in orbit, it was like five or six years. Right? It doesn't take any great technology to do this. So, in my game, and, and in my narrative, I said I, I simply had a character who was able to live through the entire 10,000 years of um, 40K history without Juvenat treatments, without any super science going on, simply by accelerating a ship, orbiting the solar system, the outer solar system, approaching C, just going up to about 50 C, <coughs> and then popping back down every once in a while, every couple months to say, so what's happening now? doing an adventure, popping back up to sea, and you can keep on going. There should be many people. They say that history disappeared and so much is lost. It really shouldn't be with all of this level of space travel. You should have a substantial percentage of the population that should have been alive at the time of the Horus Heresy and still be alive now. Uh, uh, if, if you have people living hundreds and 500 years with Juvenat treatments and doing space travel, it shouldn't be, it should be common, common for void travelers to be, a, to live thousands upon thousands of years, relatively speaking, without even trying, with an actually organized effort. Like I said, traveling around black holes and neutron stars and everything like that. You can easily have people who the Horus Heresy just happened last week. Or even, or, or you know, hey, the, the you know, that Van Gogher, Van Dyer incident just happened a few hours ago. I know all about that, even just from a historian standpoint. 10,000 years is not 10,000 years when you're on a million planets spanning the entire galaxy. So, relativity is a problem in 40K. We're not even talking time travel. We're just talking space travel. Something for people to think about. I hope you like it. Until next time. Bye.